hello, Jules Standish. I am so excited and very well welcome to the Nancy Stevens Arts and Style Show, the isolation interview. Welcome. Thank you, Nancy. How lovely, lovely to be invited on. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I know uh, I would say you're a very busy woman, but you know, can, we can't use that excuse at the moment, can we? Well, actually, I don't know. I'm, I'm finding myself at the end of each day thinking, what have I achieved? But I feel incredibly busy. So I don't know whether it's the, the constant cleaning, cooking or uh, whatever it is, but I am also trying to write my third book. So I am finding my spare time is it's kind of forcing me into doing what I've been procrastinating on for rather a long time. So for absolutely, me, absolutely, yeah. uh, quite, quite a good thing. But um, yeah, it's an interesting time for everybody, isn't it? It certainly is. So I'm going to do an intro. Um, extraordinary, uh, you know, you're an extraordinary person and you've changed so many people's lives with your wonderful colour message. So um, you've written this book that's been a, a game changer for me, is How Not to Wear Black. Do you want to do an intro? You're probably better at it than I am. Tell, you know, tell us about the, you know, the books you've read and how you got started as being the foremost expert in colour analysis in the country. Uh, well, it's lovely for you to say that about me. Um, actually, I, I trained as a stylist, but the colour side of it just was like a light bulb moment for me. And I sort of did it begrudgingly thinking, all right, I'll stick colour on. But I had to do 20 case studies when I was training. And by the time I got to the fifth person, I literally could not believe the light bulb moment that was happening for this person and myself at the same time. The smile that happened every time the right color went on the face, the difference to the skin tone. It was like somebody started to glow and they could really see it for themselves. And it changed that they were viewing themselves in the mirror. And I just thought, wow, this is so incredibly powerful. So I did my colour training and I did my stylist training and I combined everything but for me it just became more and more and more important to do colour, to help people understand how colour could really transform the way that they felt about themselves by the way that they looked but it, it's a kind of a real energy when someone sees themselves in the right colour that from inside that confidence, that smile can really change people. So I became really passionate about that. And I kept seeing particularly women coming into my studio who were just wearing a lot of black. And as I showed them whether they could or couldn't wear black, again, it was like another revelation to see what black did to warm skin tones, to those people and personalities that it really didn't suit. How much it drained the skin, how much it made people look older. It was quite shocking to some, less so to others. And when we're younger, we tend to get away with more. But particularly uh, for the aging woman, I think it was a really big deal. And so it wasn't about saying to someone, you can't ever wear black again, because, you know, colour is a therapy to me, and I don't want to ever send anyone into therapy <laughs> by telling them they can't wear the colour. Um, and it is, you know, mainly it's about a different shade that we can all wear anyway, but black is a separate issue. And it really only suits the, the very cool skin tones, and um, someone who actually does like to spend a lot of time on their own and find that the colour black is for them a really healthy protection. Um, so that's how I started to, to think about writing How Not To Wear Black. I thought, wow, it's a colour in fashion we're all told to wear all the time, but how many of us can really do it and wear it well? And for those that can't, to actually be able to show people and understand how they can continue to wear it in their wardrobes, but maybe think about moving out of black into other neutral colours or simply wearing their best colours up against the skin to make the complexion still look good. So you keep that glow, but you also keep the black that you love in your wardrobe because colours are about being happy, right? That's what colours should do. Absolutely. For you. Absolutely. And I, but I, lo I love your stance um, is, you know, the, the psychology behind it. So for me, as, as someone who trained in colour analysis 20 odd years ago, colour me beautiful, you know, different, different kind of system. It was, it was quite basic. It was, you know, spring, summer, autumn, winter kind of end of. And it was, that was easy for my clients to understand that. But I think what you do is the psychology behind it. And that's the extra layer which I find so fascinating. And that's what, that's your USP. That's what makes you different from any, any other colour um, you know, color, you know, you're known as a color counselor, really, um, that I've ever come across. And that's why your book is a bestseller. Um, so the psychology behind it, that's quite interesting. How, how does that all work? Well, you know, first of all, it's really important to say, I think that all the color houses out there 
They're amazing. They help people get into color. And, you know, we all do it differently. And Carol Jackson was uh, one of the pioneers that brought color into this country, for which we all have to be incredibly grateful. My system is very much based on a woman who was an American uh, colorist around at exactly the same time as, as Carol Jackson called Bernice Kentner. And she put together the Hippocrates uh, notion of the four different skin tones, the underlying skin tones and temperaments and match them up. And then it was the philosopher Galen that took it, uh, he was a physicist as well, took it into the seasonal analysis types. For me, this was really fascinating when I trained. And I remember thinking, gosh, I wonder if this actually really works. And, and you know, it, it, for me, it's been a really important part of, of what I do, recognizing the underlying skin tone that Hippocrates noted for us physically and how that ties in with the more introvert extrovert colors and what we can wear and how that works within our personality we are all individuals so we can be a mix of different temperaments of course and that will also have an influence on how much of certain colors that we can wear so you being a wonderful extrovert you know you're very spring in your nature you're you're outgoing you're sunny um, and you probably take on lots of things that perhaps you don't always finish because you love exciting things and new things come in and you want to do all of those. So, okay. Oh I, my I God, you've you... literally, you've just literally <laughs> summed me up. So, so that's that the spring, so but you, know, yeah. you might be very 10 out of 10 on the spring scale, which means for you, wearing lots of bright colours is who you are. And that, that really projects your personality. It makes you feel happy. People love you for that. But actually, there might equally be someone who's, say, only six out of 10 on the scale that might have quite a strong uh, winter or some of the more, uh, the cooler, more introverted uh, temperaments. And therefore, they might just feel comfortable wearing just a bright shirt with a more neutral jacket because to them, it's about that amount of colour. So I think, again, where the personality and psychology really came in for me was about showing each person how to be really individual in that. And again, all the other color systems do it differently and make and help people be individual, but it was just my thing. So uh, I, I think it's just my, a point of difference that you said. The psychology really fascinates me also about how we can use different colors for different things in our lives. So, you know, you might have a favorite color and I know you've talked to me about pink and pink is the color of compassion and love and nurturing and sharing. And it's about, you know, when you might consider wearing pink, for instance, now in lockdown, it's a it's, you know, a really lovely colour to help spread the love and and and, you know, the compassion that we feel for others in our environment. But it might equally be that someone who's very anxious finds that blue is a much better colour for them right now because it will help calm them down. So, again, adding the psychology in makes it gives it another layer of Yes, we can all have those best colours, but how do we then use colour to help us in our everyday world? And, you know, no time more than now when we're all feeling different emotions on a daily basis, really. So I know it's a big ask, and obviously this is, this is technically radio. Could you grab some drapes and kind of just do a little demo as to how, you know, how you sort of do a quick a quick diagnosis because I, I tried to do um, I was when I was on the breakfast show on BBC Three Counties I had to do the presenters colours and it's quite challenging doing something that's so visual without being able to see it and you know I, that's that's how do you manage to do that because I guess you're doing quite a bit of that in lockdown now as well. Um, well, the, the interesting thing obviously is that I have a system and I've done the same thing for 15 years so I can pretty much do it in my sleep. But I do it uh, with the four different colours. So I'm going to show you what I start with. And I always start with the reds. So I have a system. So I would always, again, start with summer. So I do the two cool se seasons first. So I do summer red first, which is actually a very pinky colour. Summers have a very soft, delicate palette that tends to be very much on the cool side. I always liken the seasons that, that belong to us as the seasons in this country. So we go from very bright, uh, warm spring into the summer palette, which is uh, how I liken the landscape to the sun's faded it. So it's like talcum powders on it. So it goes kind of pastel shades. So for summers, the pinks are a really, really, uh, they're a big deal. They really suit the summer palette. And then when we go into winter- so who, the, Sorry the, to interrupt, the... sorry. Sorry to interrupt, Jules. Who's a famous summer? Who could we sort of say as a famous summer? We'll do famous people. Okay, so maybe. I would say, in fact, I was, just seeing her recently, Ellie Fanning, the actress. So 
with a very ashy cool look to her hair probably a sort of like you would uh, a very cool skin tone but a very delicate soft what you would notice would probably be like an all over pink kind of undertone to the skin not to be mistaken with the spring that has a flushing ability to it which is quite <laughs> Yeah. Oh, are you blushing, Nancy? Okay. I am. I'm, I'm really flushed, actually. Hello, spring. Hello, spring. Um, and so the summer is very delicate. It tends to have blue eyes, blue grey eyes. Can have brown eyes. Can also be light brown. It's unusual to find a summer with a very strong dynamic colouring. They tend to be more on the softer, more delicate. So you think about the summer palettes going to be like that, because obviously we're talking about harmony. So it's a very soft colour. It, it's, it's not at all right for me. It makes me suddenly go way too pink because it's cool based and I have a warm skin tone like you. If I put the fuchsia up, it wears me. Now, one of the really important things about your analysis is does the colour wear you? Okay. Mm. Someone walks into a room and you go, wow, look at that pink dress. You've missed the person. Yeah. You, if it really suits you and resonates and looks fabulous and harmonises with your skin tone and your colouring, you're going to say, wow, look at you in that pink dress. And that's the point of difference. Does the colour wear you? This mm. totally wears me. So when I find uh, my, um, gone into, yeah, I'll go right now into, here we are. I have to put my bright red on because suddenly for me, what's happened is that my skin is even and I feel very happy. And I'm kind of like, I'm in my wow zone. I yes. know it's the best colours. Yeah. Um, but equally, if I was to go back into, because uh, we were talking, we were talking pink, so I can go back into pink. I've also got a peach. It's one of the key colours for spring. And the reason for that is that spring has what we call, what I call, a peaches and cream complexion. So peach makeup, anything that's got a coral base. So where I put the fuchsia up, you can see that it totally wears me. My skin's gone a bit too pink. When I put the peach on, it evens up my skin tone. It makes it look okay. Yeah. Glowing. That's what we're looking for for anybody. So if I just put that hot fuchsia pink up against a winter who had a very cool colouring, again, the winter is a cool skin tone, like summer. However, the difference, also being a blue-based skin tone, is that winter has a very dramatic look. So winter has a very milky uh, skin tone or a very, very dark tone. Okay, but the thing about the winter is the drama. So a very milky skin tone, very dark with very very dark hair um, uh, and it is the drama so if you had a winter lady walking into a room you'd be going wow that looks incredible in its wow. entirety mm. you'd be saying this color and again it happens so with who's black. a famous the, winter then um nigella lawson she's a yeah. she's a fabulous uh winter as an example Idris Elba, he's another a winter male, so that's the very dark skin tone of the winter. So it's the drama of winter. So when we talk about harmony, it's about the look of that person. So for winter, it's about the drama and the contrast. Okay, fine. So we've got the, we've got the, the cool summers and the cool winters. So winter is the only skin tone that can wear black really, really well. And sometimes if there's a confusion between whether someone is a winter or not, because lots of women want to be winters, <laughs> because of wearing black, okay? I just simply put the black drape up against the face and it does the job very nicely for me. I don't even really need to speak sometimes because mm. really suddenly is, there's dark under the eyes. That happens a lot for people. We all have different issues on our own skin and as we age, they get more, okay? Yeah. For a lot of people, there's a dark eye thing that makes people look very tired. You can get this on very young people. I've done 16, 17 year olds, put black up against their face and it's been like, oh, I look exhausted, right? So we all want yeah. that healthy look. For me, the lines between the, here, my lines here around my mouth, for those of you that can't see it, they're okay, my yeah. issue as I bother me. I don't have any cosmetic work. Uh, what I do is all about using color to look youthful and healthy. It's not for me personally about that. So. If I'm going to wear black up against my face, these lines are going to show because they're dark. I'm yes, also going okay. to be shadowy under my chin. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. Yeah. It really, to do colour analysis justice, you should have no makeup on for women. Absolutely. Yeah. And, okay. that's, and that's a really important point. Absolutely. And it's good light and it's doing all these sort of, you know, 
tools to get it absolutely right. But what it's about a very key... this? What yeah, yeah, about you and I going the same gray thing. Well, going gray first of all, can dust, I just say, change? Yeah. Well, look what's happening to me. You can see this, but for people listening, mm. I've just slightly nodded my head and look at the roots in my hair. Now it's yes. a big deal for at this moment in time, whether they happen to be dark or gray or white. What's happened to me is your ho you can literally see my roots are really, really out there. Okay. Whereas when I take the black away, I've got one of my bright greens on, which is mm. one of my colors. You're noticing hopefully the golden colors. You're not homing in on the roots. Yeah. Okay. Black reflecting up will get the roots in the hair and they'll highlight anything dark. On okay. a wind, it looks dramatic. On a warm skin tone, on someone like myself and yours, unfortunately, it's just going to <laughs> highlight the bit anyone else to see. Okay. So okay. Course, yeah. So, sorry, carry on. So, uh, I think what you were going to ask me is about changing hair colours as we get older anyway, forget even and cope, lockdown. Yeah, coping with lockdown hair, yeah. Lockdown hair is an interesting one. So the one thing, if you're doing your Zoom meetings, you're working online, what you don't want to do is wear the wrong colours because what's going to happen is not only are you going to look unhealthy and not very well or, you know, older, all those things that we don't want if you've got the wrong colours on. Um, the summer colours, for instance, on me, and I'm just going to show you because I've got a bright green on, which is one of my best colours. But let me, if I show you what a pastel colour does, I go very blotchy mm. because me with a yellow base skin tone, I've put a cool, ashy colour on, which looks beautiful on a soft and delicate skin tone of the summer. But for me, it's made me go incredibly blotchy and not very well looking. Again, if I go back into my colour, you can see instantly the difference. So the yes, whole, absolutely. You know, you can put a very bright colour or a, a very cool colour, a pastel shade up against someone and we'll go, well, I'm never going to wear that colour, but it's about finding the right colours for that person. When you get that wow colour on, it is literally like a light going on. It's, you know, my it is a light, absolutely. Yeah. And tell me, um, tell me about, yeah. um, so tell me about, you know, obviously you've a very high profile. You've worked, you know, you've done Lorraine Kelly, you've done uh, BBC, you've worked no, 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 television. No, no, I haven't done Lorraine Kelly. I've been on the Lorraine Kelly show. Oh, I don't, okay. I, okay, I went so on the Lorraine Kelly show, actually, uh, I never met her. I'd love to. I think she's fabulous. I went on the Lorraine Kelly show to talk about colours for the Jubilee um, uh, for Kate Middleton and for the Queen. Who I she's my queen of colour block. I just love. She's amazing. Yeah. The way that that beautiful woman dresses is so incredibly stunning. I love her. Um, so I went to talk about colours actually on celebrities and people in the public eye. And it was a great experience. I then went into one of the department stores and grabbed a couple of women and put them in colours for what, what they were doing that, that, that evening, which was huge fun. Um, but yes, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but... Uh, no, 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 your, but your credentials... The Lorraine Kelly show. Yes, but your credentials, you know, to, um, you know, you work with what, London College of Style, you've written two best-selling books. I mean, I say, you know, this book, which you very kindly <laughs> given me, which is my Bible, How Not to Wear Black, has <laughs> been an absolute life changer. You know, you're, you're very modest about your, um, you know, all of your achievements. I mean, you know, you are, as, as I see you, the foremost expert in colour in the country. And I don't, you know, there's nobody else that I would go to for kind of colour advice. So, you know, tell us about, you know, are, are you allowed to say who you've worked, any celebs that you've worked with? Or you do, is that, is that confidential? Um, yeah, probably. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've, lots of, I have worked with high profile people. But everyone's everyone's an individual to me. Uh, everyone's that you know. I wrote the books because I knew I I couldn't reach an awful lot of people. Uh, and color is universal, you know. It's 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 so subconscious to most of us because color is it's universal. It, it doesn't matter where you are in the world. Whilst we have to appreciate that color is a very cultural issue, um, it is also something that we are all seeing through our eyes every single day. You know, and I'm looking outside now and I'm very lucky because I'm, I'm actually in a, a nature situation where I can see green trees and I feel very privileged for that. But the colours are affecting my eyesight and affecting me on a physical level instantly. And green is one of the most uh, restful colours on our eyes to see, which is why around the colour wheel, green is halfway round. So it, uh, 
uh, one of those colours that does, you, you, you know, you, we will find it in hospitals, we'll find green in situations that helps to calm people down. But it's happening on a very subconscious level to all of us. So I think when we become aware of uh, all the colours around us in our homes, in our wardrobes, and the effect that it's having on us, it's a very powerful medium. So yes, I have worked in places where I have felt it's made a difference to people. So I've gone into companies and the government and uh, you know, TV uh, presenters and help them because everybody, doesn't matter who they are, can benefit from the power and the therapy that colour can give them. So uh, I, I, I like to work with people who, who really find that it makes a difference to them. And teaching at, at the London College of Style is one of my most favourite things, working with students, uh, helping people understand how to put colour into fashion and their style work is a massive privilege for me. I absolutely love it. In fact, they're just launching an online colour uh, course, which I'm, I, I'm the face of at LCS, I'm head of colour there, so I'm very, very proud to be part of that. But it's a really big deal because we're helping people in the world of uh, fashion and styling understand how to put that colour work in that's, that's really like, you know, you said, it, it, it can, for some people, really be uh, transformational. For others, it can just change things even if it's in a really little way. Like for springs, for instance, we talked about the flushing and the blushing. So for a lot of springs, that's a really key thing. When I'm teaching and I talk about the spring, I see a lot of the students uh, having a blushing moment and I know how many springs I've got in my <laughs> uh, It does tend to happen on, on a paler skin tone. This is one of the, the oh, key. Oh, yeah. And, and wonder, you know why, I'll tell you why that is. It's not because Jules made it up, but one of the things that that great Dr. Hippocrates noted about the spring, was the energy of the spring tends to run very fast. You know, very sociable, they're great communicators, they like being with people, they tend to talk a lot. Mm. Uh, they, they have this high energy. So what happens is that the hemoglobin's going around the body very fast, ends up on the, the, the cheeks and on the face. Okay, I get it. Okay. So is that why so, when I'm giving a speech, I get so flushed? Exactly. So now you know why, it's the excitement and that- I thought it was I thought it was the menopause. <laughs> well, now you can blame it on, on Hippocrates rather than the menopause, but there you go. So yes, it, it, it can get worse in the menopause because it's your natural tendency anyway. And I can say, well, I used to blush when I was younger. That's still a spring tendency because your skin has the ability to do it. There's no re other seasonal type that actually does that. So you can have really? pink oh. all over, but it's not the same thing as this high cheek color, the blushing effect. Mm. I so hate the best it. I, I, tip I'm going to give you yes. and anyone else out there who thinks that they might have the spring temperament, the spring uh, mm -hmm. is to wear green, particularly if you are having a non makeup day. Because green and one of the shades that I've got on today is one of the, uh, it's a bright green, but the lime greens, all the, 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 oh, okay. the tend to be very, very. Warm. I've got lime on today. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Look at you with your lime. That's very spring. Yeah wear green it is uh, greens and blues but green particularly if you look Bouncy at the down. it's opposite uh blues and going into the greens so it's what we call the complementary colors so if okay you greens and blues up against a flushing skin it will bring it down thank you that's such a brilliant tip oh my god yeah, Jules. It's, thank it's you it's just one of those things that helps particularly us women uh, you know, if we have that, I actually, uh, my skin doesn't, doesn't actually tend to do that. But for guys as well, you know, when I'm going in and doing guys in corporate situations, you know, just that green tie, if they're really having a yeah. day and they're flushed or they're going out drinking as, you know, uh, we all do when we're out there. It can be a drink. It can be and I'm getting embarrassed. Ab yeah, absolutely. Excitement, or it can just be the broken veins and the high cheek color that, 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 that the spring can have anyway. So. Anyway. So, I mean, honestly, I could talk to you for 24 hours, let alone 25 minutes. So how do we get hold of your amazing books? Uh, uh, how Not to Wear Black is available on, on uh, Amazon. Um, and uh, it's still in some bookstops now. It's been out quite a long time now. 2011, this book came out and it's still rocking. So for all of those guys, all of you out there, who love it. Uh, I'm uh, really thrilled. And thank you. Thank you to everybody who buys it and loves it like you do. Thank you. So we can find you all over social media. 
Yeah, I have my own Instagram, uh, Jules Standish Colour. Uh, I have my own website, Colour Consultancy. Um, and obviously, uh, uh, London College of Style Online, I'm, I'm now heading up the colour page there. So, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty much everywhere, really. My, my colour <laughs> message is out there for anybody who wants it. It's fantastic. I love the joy that you spread through colour. Jules Standish has been such an honour. Massive, massive fan of yours. Love colour. Love the message and the, the, the colour gospel that you continue to spread every day. It, it's a joy and you've made the difference to so many people's lives and I don't think people can ever underestimate the difference that you've made to them. So thank you so much for being such an amazing guest on the Nancy Stevens Arts and Style Show. Um, you can catch um, catch us all over the all over. Um, Apple, iTunes and Spotify, we're kind of everywhere. And uh, they say this is the, an isolation interview done in lockdown with Jules Standish. So thank you so much. It's been an absolute privilege.